Do you struggle losing weight? You've tried a number of different products, a number of different diets, a number of different recommendations, and you still find that you cannot shift the pounds. Want to know the secret to what it takes to make a lasting change? I'm gonna tell you that and so much more in today's episode of Going Deeper. Welcome to today's show. Welcome to today's episode of Going Deeper with John Morris. Join the show that voyages into the deeper subjects of life, from mental and physical health to emotional and spiritual well-being, but that's not all. John also goes even further into more focused areas such as anxiety, depression, weight loss, and fitness. This is the only place to go deeper in your self-discovery journey. Now please welcome mind, body, and soul's very own, John Morris. to Going Deeper. I am your host, John Morris. Yes, we finally got the name sorted out and everything. And Going Deeper is exactly what we do. We go a little bit deeper into a specific topic, subject, or idea. And I want to welcome you. Today we are talking about making a change that lasts, but also focusing on weight loss. Many people around the world really, really struggle with weight. In Scotland alone, it is one of the highest rates of obesity in the entire world. It's all those deep fried Mars bars and fried food that tend to do it. But fear not, because many people, and for that very reason, many people now are starting to get really health conscious and starting to think more and more about their health and the longevity and the quality of health as well. So with that in mind, why are more people not having success when it comes to losing weight? Well, first of all, like any battle that we go into, we always talk about this, know thy enemy. Know the thing that you're trying to shift. And in this case, it is not weight loss, but it is how to make a lasting change. I did a research project recently where I asked three people in specific from a wide variety of different ages and a wide variety of locations around the world, all that had one thing in common. They were all going through a breakup. And I said to these ladies, I said, could you just tell me two things about yourself? I said, first of all, how are you coping? And how long has it been since the relationship has broken up? And for people, they were, you know, anything from a month to a couple of weeks, right down to a year or two. And they said, well, some days I'm coping really, really well and I'm really, really strong. Other days, I'm really, really not doing well. Now, even when somebody knows that a relationship that they were in was not good for them, it was quite a toxic relationship, they still had that mindset of, well, if so-and-so called, I would go running back. And I started to think, well, why is this? So I started to do some research. And the reason that when people make changes, they often don't stick is because of this. Say, for example, you're trying to give something up. Christians and Catholics have a thing called Lent, where they give up something for 40 days. And it could be crisps, it could be cake, it could be chocolate, it could be sweets, it could be whatever it might be. The list is long and varied. So what tends to happen is this, your brain is saying, well, this gives me pleasure. See, it, 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 it's, uh, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or a packet of crisps. This gives me pleasure, this fulfills a need. Human beings, as I've said before, have several fundamental needs. In this case, it is the feeling of connectivity and the feeling of significance that fuels not making a change. So people can be in a really abusive relationship. They can rationalize in their mind that, it's better for me to walk away from this, but when they do so, the brain, being the great host that it is, then says, well, hang on a second, I now need to replace those feelings. And the brain doesn't care really how it replaces those feelings, it just knows it needs to replace the feelings. And that is why so many relationships end up breaking up, getting back together, breaking up, getting back together, and blah, 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 blah. On and on and on, because they're trying to keep that feeling alive, as opposed to trying to find out new ways and new things of doing things. So this kind of got me thinking with regards to weight loss. Why do so many people decide, right, I want to lose weight. I want to lose weight, and I want to lose it by such and such a date. What's the one critical thing that the majority of people fail to do? They fail to set their goal. Now, weight loss and Weight Watchers and all these other camps that are out there, all focus on this now. The thing that you need to know is where is your goal? Is it to lose 10 pounds? Is it to lose 5 pounds? Is it to lose 50 pounds? And when will you attempt to do it by? Now, these are really, really important goals because once you've got a goal in mind, you know then that you can drive forward with that. So, before we get too far ahead, I want to answer the question that I was asked. Why are there not more people that are losing weight? Well, simple. 
Again, like I say, if you're trying to cut something out, maybe you're trying to cut out a lot of sugar, your body is craving the sugar because you fed it sugar for so long and now all of a sudden you've taken it away. And it feels like, oh my goodness, I've got to replace these good feelings with, with, with something, I need some sugar. So the body starts saying, I, and the brain, it's all in the brain, the brain starts saying to you, I need sugar, I need sugar, I need sugar. And that's why it, an addiction is so hard to break. Remember this. In the terms of an addiction or something that you love, you can never ever get enough of what you don't want. If you want, if you don't want sugar in your life, you can never get enough of it. If you don't want those sweeties and those all those other things in your life, you can never get enough because your body keeps saying, "I want more, I want more, I want more," which is why making a lasting change is so difficult. So, with that in mind. How do we make a lasting change? Well, it starts with getting clear on your goal. Is it to lose 50 pounds? Is it just to tighten up? Is it to change some things about yourself? And that is something that you need to look at. Whenever you make a lasting change or a change that's going to last, you have to be willing to do whatever it takes to get there. Now, I often say to people, and people don't like this when I say this because it means that you're gonna have to give up something that you really, really enjoy or love or have a positive affirmation to. Even if you know that it isn't good for you, people still can develop positive affirmations and positive, uh, positive connections to whatever it may be, okay? So you need to make a lifestyle change where you say, okay, I'm gonna have little bits as opposed to having lots. I'm not going to eat until I'm feeling full and stuffed with every single meal that I have. I am going to eat just enough portion size until I am full. It comes down to looking at your portion sizes, the amount that you're having of this specific food group, making sure you have a balanced and varied diet, making sure that your portion size is an, is an equation to your height. All these things, and it takes a little bit of research and we can help you with that, but these are really, really important things. So don't load your plate up full if you're trying to lose weight. Load your plate half the portion size, or maybe even a quarter of the portion size if you really like to pig out. Um, load it a quarter of what you would have. It's better that you have regular small meals than to have a few giant meals. So that's really important. So what we often say now is that you'll probably eat maybe eight times a day, but it'll be smaller portions as opposed to the three big meals that you would have, a breakfast, of lunch, and of dinner. So technically, what, what, what will they now say that you should do is for breakfast, have your normal breakfast. For lunch, you should have a bigger meal. And then when it gets to dinner time, you should have a smaller meal, and that will stop you from being hungry throughout the night and that will really help. Also, really try to avoid snacking, and that may mean that you don't buy a ton of snacks that are there. Just have a few as a treat in a week or in a month, and then you start to develop. But whenever you make a change, you've got to be willing to do whatever it takes, and that means sometimes cutting out the things that you really, really want, because you know where you want to get to. Doesn't really, that doesn't really help. What I want you to do whenever you start having that, you know, those questions and the doubts is to start asking yourself this question. I want you to really burn this into your mind. Is what I'm about to do serving what I want to become? Is what I'm about to do serving what I want to become? So is that chocolate cake that I'm about to eat helping me lose weight? Okay. I want you to really, really focus upon that. And if you do, that's gonna make such a difference in your life. The other thing that you need to consider when you are losing or trying to lose weight is this. And this is where many people struggle. It's the association more than anything else. And with the life coaching session at John Morris Personal Coaching Sessions, um, we can help you with this. Again, everything that we see in our external world began as a thought. So everything that we see, hear, touch, taste, smell, all began as a thought. If you don't like you know, where, what you're seeing, change your thoughts. So people often say to me, well, John, I really don't like exercise. 
and it's often the word exercise because it and, and I, I was a bodybuilder okay and I've been, been bodybuilding now for 20 years there are times that I really don't want to get in the gym but I have all these different associations I know that when I'm doing photographs when I'm doing speaking I want to look my best because when I look my best I feel my best I love when I cross my arms and you've got the big arms and everything the chest that pops out then that makes me feel really good and really confident and that's where my mental association goes, okay? So if, if, if the word exercise has a negative you know, connotation for you, call it movement, call it getting the blood flowing, get, you know, call it whatever you want. Start getting some positive affections and some positive associations to what you're doing. So it, it's the fine balance, okay? It's making lifestyle shifts. It's not cutting out everything that you enjoy and you love. And that was the information that was told for years. It's not a case of doing that. It's a case of simply making adjustments and not focusing too much. Have a balanced diet, but make sure you try and go for a walk. Make sure you try and get in the gym. If you love the gym, make sure you get in the gym. If you love Zumba, if you love uh, you know, boxer size or these other fitness classes and all these other things that are out there, there's a lot of different things nowadays. And if you need some motivation, well, you're looking at the coach that can help you do that with our motivational coaching program. We've got something for everybody. It's, it's, it's become a really, really cool thing and I'm really excited about it. And we're getting to work with people all over the world and from all walks of life. I love it. But before I digress, so it's again about making those shifts getting rid of the things in your life that you do not want, that no longer serve you in trying to get to your goal. It's about having accountability. Now, if you've got a friend that's gonna help you do that, brilliant. If you haven't, get in touch with me at thebattleswealthface.com and I'll be happy to talk to you regarding personal coaching and motivational coaching because this, this can make the difference between success and staying where you are. Um, it's also then about exercise. You know, and, and exercise, it doesn't need to be this big struggle, you know, and all this other stuff. It can just be simple going for a walk, getting some movement. Now, I know some folks that are watching this have got life-limiting abilities and life-limiting life -limiting illnesses and I completely appreciate that. So I want I want to encourage you with this before we wrap up. I want you to do what you can with what you have right now. Okay, so I've got a friend of mine uh, out in California that is wheelchair bound. She's having problems with the hips, so that's why she's wheelchair bound. She says to me, you know, I'm putting on a ton of weight and I can't exercise. I said, well, how's your arms? And how's your breathing? And she was like, well, both, both are fine. I said, well, do you have a wheelchair? And she was like, yeah, I have a wheelchair. I said, do you have a Zimmer? And she's like, yeah, I have a Zimmer. I said, can you walk normally with the Zimmer? And she said, yeah. I said, okay, well, why not then go for a walk using the Zimmer? Use the Zimmer to, to support yourself, but make sure you're walking. If you are doing wheelchairs, I don't know if any of you guys have ever seen the Paralympics or anything like that. These boys and girls that are in the Paralympics have muscles sometimes bigger than some of the biggest bodybuilders because they're constantly working. Trust me, if you ever sat in a wheelchair and you've been working yourself around and you've been doing a whole range of motion and movements and things, you're getting a good workout. It is not a limitation unless you allow it to be. And if there is a limitation there, you can find ways around it. There are always, always ways and things that you can do. So I really hope that encourages you today. If you have enjoyed this video, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Please don't forget as always to like, share and subscribe. Tell a friend because it could be the very thing that helps them in their journey. And what I want to encourage you is with this, and we're going to put up an advert after this show to tell you a little bit more about the coaching session, but if you are interested in motivational coaching or personal coaching for losing weight, you just want someone to really spur you on, then you're looking at the person that can do it because I've been doing it myself now for about 20 years and I've seen great results and I love what I get to do. So you can get in touch with us at thebattlesweallface.com where you can check out uh, coaching and a whole variety of different options and products and all sorts of other things that are there. We're always here to help. Drop me an email and I'll be glad to hear from you. Well, folks, that's all we've got time for. I really hope you've enjoyed this episode of Going Deeper. Make sure to tune in the same time next week, but don't forget to tune in this Friday for another special interview with our guest. Who's it going to be? I don't know yet. I don't know. You're going to have to tune on Friday with the sea. But it's going to be great fun. And if you missed last week's episode, make sure to go back and check that out because it was an absolutely amazing show. And, uh, and I thoroughly, thoroughly loved it. Well, folks, we're out of time. I will see you next time. Take care. God bless. Don't forget, like, share, and subscribe. I have been your host, John Morris. This has been Going Deeper, where we go that little bit deeper into a specific topic, subject, or uh, whatever it might be. I'll see you next time. Do you struggle with
of motivation. Feel yourself procrastinating a lot. Have amazing ideas and dreams, but struggle with the concept of how to get from where you are to where you want to be. Or maybe looking for something a little bit simpler, like wanting to get fit, or maybe wanting to lose a few pounds and tighten things up. Are you someone that struggles with anxiety or trauma or even depression? You're not alone. Many people around the world do. Hi folks, I'm John Morris. And for the last two decades, I've been working with people from all over the world in all walks of life to really understand human beings, the concept, the behaviors, and ultimately the reasons why. And I've had the privilege of coaching and working with folks just like you, that maybe are struggling with anxiety or depression or trauma or wanting to get ahead, wanting to maybe build some long-term success, but have no idea how to begin. This is what I do. And with John Morris Life Coaching, you're in really, really good hands. Why can I say this? Because you're not only gonna get an experienced life coach, you're also gonna get somebody that has a wide variety of experiences, from youth ministry and working with teenagers and children, to someone who's worked with drug addicts and alcoholics, people that have day-to-day -day dependency issues, to, to somebody maybe just like you, that just wants that little bit of encouragement, wants that little bit of motivation, and wants support to get to that next level. With John Morris Personal Life Coaching, you're in really good hands. A lot of my clients would tell you if they were here now that one of the greatest assets to John Morris Life Coaching is you can see things exactly as you want to see them without fear of being controlled and conformed like a lot of therapists and coaches do. We help you right where you're at to get to the place that you want to be, step by step, to figure out a plan. So if this sounds like something that you would be interested in, having that support, motivation, encouragement, and even education, should you need it, then get in touch with me today. I would love to hear from you. Places are limited, so please don't delay. We've got a very, very small window of opportunity remaining. We all need help from time to time, but the difference between success and failure, achieving our dreams, and maybe just letting our dreams go by, depends on the level of help that we have available and that we're willing to accept. So get in touch with me today at John Morris Life Coaching. You'll be glad you did, and I'll see you soon.